Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey everybody, welcome live from Chicago. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. All things sports medicine, fitness, and wellness brought to you by Global School Wear, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity Review, and MVP Parent Magazines, UK Health Radio. Got a great doubleheader today in the world of youth sports, youth sports apps and concussions. Mike Pia, he's the CEO, the co-founder of HitCheck, bringing personalized cognitive assessment of head trauma and concussions of all sports. He returns along with Ian Goldberg, uh, the CEO and founder of iSport360, the app that enhances all aspects of communication in youth sports, especially with parents, kids, and coaches. Then some Bob Guider wisdom, some emails. First, let's welcome back Mike Pia. Welcome back to the Sports Doctor. Thank you. Appreciate you having me back on. Yes. Give us a quickie background on you and HitCheck uh, and uh, tell us all about that the new venture. Yeah. So, so um, HitCheck is, uh, we started the company about five years ago in 2000, uh, late 2016, 17. And what we've done is we've created an application, so a mobile app that uh, used on any mobile um, device to help screen for signs of concussion. So it's a cognitive test that um, an athlete would take or an individual would take, and um, it takes about it's seven to eight minutes. takes a baseline test, correct. Yes. So they take a baseline, and then if an incident would happen, they retake the test, which is a post-test, and the technology compares the results um, or the differences, and if there's, it'll indicate if there's a decline in their cognitive behavior, which would um, indicate that there's a possible sign of a concussion. Now, that's a big deal. As you know, I'm a sports doctor. I've spoken to experts from all over the world, neurosurgeons, psychologists, other experts in the world of identification of dealing with treatment protocols of concussions, and we've come a long, long way, baby, and, uh, you know, HitCheck is definitely one of the positive uh, reasons, the ability to know right away on the sidelines, whether whatever the sport is, whatever the ages of these athletes are, the ability to say, wait a second, uh, we've got to be able to um, uh, identify whether there's a problem to get this kid out of the game uh, and uh, go from there. So working with athletic trainers, I would imagine, as well as uh, uh, doctors, and uh, coaches is a big direction that you guys take, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the athletic trainers are really the ones that, um, you know, use the product the most, and, you know, they'll, they'll basically um, manage the, the teams, you know, at either the high school, club level, youth level, whatever, college. And, um, you know, they're the ones that will administrate the, the test right to the athletes, either they're on the, the sidelines. Yeah, they're the geniuses, the ability to assess spinal injuries, all sorts of injuries from ankles and whatever to the ability of making this major problem is, of course, is that I don't know how many percentage of schools in the United States sports teams don't even have uh, an athletic trainer. What are the ages that hit check uh, really pays attention to, Mike? Yeah, so the the prime age is usually um, about age 10 um, through 20. Five, and um, you know it's, we actually start the app. We have um, different tests within the apps based on um, age, so we can actually start it at age six. But most, you know, most of the youth leagues are are starting, especially where there's contact involved in the particular sport. They'll start at you know age ten, and then it'll go up through high school and the collegiate level. Yes, you know, I've been screaming about that for thirty years. This whole idea of contact sports and growing kids eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. That's the youth sports, the world uh, that, that we're involved in. And there's always been, you know, the old days where a, uh, 
Uh, there would be some head trauma. Someone would get their head dung in football, whatever the sport was, come to the sidelines. Coach would say, how many fingers? Okay, send them back. Uh, knock on wood, we've come a long way from that. Right, Mike? Right. Well, I mean, that, you know, the, the CDC actually came out with, you know, some, um, you know, the finger test and, I, and basically said eye test and, some, you know, memorizing some words and things like that. But that's really all we had back then. You know, the technology wasn't there. So, you know, now we have something that's not only um, simple and fairly accurate, but also um, it's it's really engaging and the experience or the user experience for the well, athlete. There's so many of these is, areas, is Michael. I've had experts on that talk about the technology of mouthpieces, being a detective uh, a tool as well as an alignment tool, to my friends at uh, Athlete Intelligence and the use of sensors and helmets. Again, trying to get a handle on what happened and then what to do about it. And so the ability on the sidelines, I would imagine that, uh, again, the coaches, and it's funny when you mentioned some of those different ages, but when we think about gymnastics and my world of figure skating, some of these other areas, we already have serious kids uh, in those uh, particular uh, age groups how has the medical community responded uh, to uh, hit check, Mike? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's been real positive, and, you know, especially um, from the athletic trainer standpoint because, it's again, it's a tool they can use to help them make a better decision about the cognitive condition of an athlete. Now, so the, think, parents, you know, the parents of these kids, um, all, are they uh, also, this is a product for parents to have, uh, the uh, ability to see, you know, where the kid came back from practice and whatever, or is it strictly for the professionals? No, the, so the, the athlete can download the app and, uh, you know, they could take practice tests, they can take the post tests, um, and the parents could also download the app with the um, login information from the athlete. And, um, you know, obviously if they're under the age of 13, the parent is, is the primary um, person that would sign up for the app but so the parents have access to it so that just like you said they could see you know if someone is at practice and they took a test they could they could um, review that um, obviously in the collegiate level you know it's mainly just the athlete that has it and they each have their you know their own individual um, test on the on the app and then the athletic uh, trainer or the md the doctor would have yeah. a, a full roster now so. now all you got to do is to get these kids and players to tell the truth uh, but now an objective test makes a, makes a huge difference. Everybody listening to the <laughs> sports doctor, I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. Go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com. If you go over to radio shows, you back years, you'll catch Mike on us with a couple times in the past uh, talking about hit check as well as so many different topics, so many different experts locally, nationally, internationally. If you go over to newspaper articles and magazines, you can read a lot of excitement with MVP Parent Magazine. Low extremity review, all sorts of again concussion uh, information. We also throw in how to choose the best shoe for your son or daughter. We're talking with Mike Pia, and he is the uh, uh, co-founder, uh, CEO of uh, HitCheck. And um, what is your new project? Um, this mindful players project, Mike, uh, that you guys really have just. Gotten an issue, uh, involved with? Yeah, so we we recently launched it, and um, we so what we did is we did a part. It's called Mindful Players Project, and it's providing um, state of the art concussion education and testing. So we partnered with a company called Plasticity Centers. Um, they've got uh, facilities. It's a healthcare facility in the Denver, uh, Colorado, um, Orlando, Florida, and Atlanta, Georgia, currently with plans to expand to several other states. And what, what they do is they're, they're basically the uh, rehabilitation side. So, you know, after an athlete um, has experienced um, a head injury or TBI, um, these guys are, are a quality group where you can go and um, basically for treatment after. So we partner with them and then Crash Course by TeachAids out of Stanford University um, who developed an incredible um, education platform. So it's basically just learning about concussions, and that's for the athlete, the coach, administrator, and the parent. So 
So we partnered with those two companies, and what we're doing is we we launched it in the Denver, Colorado area, and we're providing the hit check test, cognitive test, and the symptoms test, um, and the crash course um, education test for no cost to any youth or high school organization or club organization that would have an interest in it up to a certain amount. So, um, and it's a fairly large amount that we're supporting in the area. Um, we've already signed up um, a large You know, the whole program. area of, because um, uh, still today, if you say pin me down and you say how specific can we be on treatment of concussions, and the word is iffy. There's all sorts of new information on being able to determine how long does this athlete need to be out. And there are mistakes made all the time, like in the NFL game, whatever it was a couple of months ago, where even the top of the world experts, and you know what? I think you made a mistake. So the, the three words we talk about all the time on the sports, Dr. Michael, number one is awareness, uh, the idea of these services being available. And the other one's education, again, like you're talking about, educating these parents, these coaches, these organizations. Uh, then positive action, the ability to move forward with um, expertise to be able to help individuals make that decision regarding uh, treatment. What's the best website uh, that people could find out about everything Hit Check? Well, you can go to uh, just hitcheck.com, H-I-T-C-H-E-C-K.com. And then the uh, Mindful Players Project, we do have a, a site that we set up for it. So if there's anybody in the in the Denver area currently, or if you know any of the youth programs, um, you know, we're supporting these programs at no cost. So it's, it's a really great deal. Um, and that's just well, that's, mindful. You know, the idea is getting the word out. That's why we're making a big deal out of it. You know, yeah. we're, we're talking to you because this is the kind of service we need to be able to build on. Uh, again, concussion and head trauma is a gigantic problem. Whether you're talking about TBI with uh, uh, service people or accidents and or the sports world. And, of course, youth sports is in the middle of a lot of it, and we want to be able to enhance prevention as best we can and the, uh, uh, the different uh, options and uh, uh, treatment options. And, again, having a tool like this on the sidelines, uh, again, in order to be able to have a, a baseline uh, that you can compare to, uh, I think is a, uh, uh, a terrific idea. And uh, some of your colleagues with Hit Check, Mike, uh, also um, are uh, involved. I, you know, the uh, uh, Dr. Benford, your medical guy, you have quite a few uh, uh, neurological or other different experts involved with Hit Check, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, doc- Dr. Benford is our uh, co-founder, and um, he has an athletic trainer background. He worked with the, the San Francisco 49ers and the Golden State Warriors uh, D team. And then uh, Dr. Gian is a neurosurgeon um, with Kaiser, one of the directors up there. And so, between the two of them, um, you know, they're 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 amazing on what they've brought to the table, you know, through their experience. And then we also work. Now with, you're an um, old football guy, right? You're a guy who came out in the world of uh, of football and coaching for years, right? I played. I played 16 years, uh, four years of collegiate ball, and uh, coached for about 25 years. So I've been around, you know, the contact sport game for a long time, and um, you know, I think it's it's extremely valuable that we have some, you know, some tools that we can use to help, uh, you know, keep the players um, safe out there. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We all know, uh, you know, there ain't no safe tackle football collision sport and we know that we're going to have to be dealing with this and the idea again is to come up with the best tools to try to prevent problems and try to enhance education again for parents and or coaches and uh, organizations Um, and uh, maybe we'll have some of your medical experts on in in the future talk a little bit about some of the new ideas in treatment and some of the other uh, medical evaluations you know that are done you know besides the um of uh, the sports community, you know, Mike? Right. No, you're right on. Or high performance, unique brain performance, and paying attention to those situations. You know, we talk on the sports doctor a lot. I call it the mental game. 
whether you're the best athlete in the world or their parent or their coach, and we're looking to enhance performance as much as possible. And the, the understanding of what a big deal the cognitive and mental side is, uh, I would imagine, again, that's another exciting area uh, regarding um, everything from attention to teamwork to enhancing performance. Right. Yeah, I think uh, you're, you're right on. And, and, you know, I was down at the uh, Super Bowl um, in uh, Arizona last month, and I went to a, a Lee Steinberg sponsored a, um, a brain health summit that I attended. And what was re- what I really thought was impressive is that um, everybody's talking about it now and everybody's coming up with solutions, you know, not only for the prevention side, on the upfront, like we're doing, where you can you can you know manage um, uh, head trauma, yeah. you know up front, but also at you know the, the follow up. Michael, give me. Yeah. I knew the time would fly with you. We've done it three different times on the show. Yeah, I know. Give me again. So it's the um, hitcheck dot com. Uh, people can go to to find out about that. And the uh, what what's the site for the Mindful Players Project? Yeah, yeah. So it's just hitcheck dot com, and then Mindful. M I N D F U L players, P L A Y E R S dot org. And you can go there and you could see all the information based on that. Terrific. Michael, keep up the great work. We're going to keep our eye on you with some of this. Hold hey, on, Mike. We'll be right back, everybody. Sports appreciate the time, on, Michael. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Live from Chicago, it's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wiles, sports podiatrist. We want to welcome back Ian Goldberg, uh, frequent guest over the past two years, the CEO and founder of iSport360, the app that enhances all aspects of communication in youth sports, especially parents, kids, coaches. Ian, welcome back. Great to be back, Dr. Bob. Give us a quickie on the history of iSport 360. Um, I don't know if I had you on the radio the first week you were involved. I can't remember. <laughs> but give us uh, uh, some history of you and iSport 360. Sure. Um, yeah, so um, for your audience, I'm a, a sports dad. I live in New Jersey. I coach my two daughters. And I've been coaching them for many years now. But as soon as I started coaching, I felt like we could really use some help with the communication and collaboration between coach, parent, and player, especially between coach and player. I felt like there was a real um, lack of good feedback, um, open lines of communication, and a lot of it is because, let's face it, you know, parents these days, uh, me being one of them, we get, we get in between that um, relationship between the coach and our player, and we act as the intermediary. So I created iSport360. It's an app that coaches and players use to communicate, but parents also get to see all of that communication so that we make sure we are complying with child privacy laws and we're making sure parents can see all the things that kids are doing It's an area, Ian, that I've been talking about on the sports doctor, I don't know, 30 years, give or take a few weeks, (laughs) in the world of youth sports, the overzealous parent on the sideline, the uh, crazy coach, pressure on these kids, uh, both physically and mentally. There's nothing more in the middle of everything we're doing now than the world of mental health and this, this whole awareness factor. So this missing link, the ability to comfortably and happily initiate the communication, I would imagine was um, like we felt really on the sports doctor that you really, really hit a major important point. Thank you. Well, our thesis is the reason parents are so overzealous and amped up on the sidelines is because they don't really feel like they know why the coach is taking their child out of the game or not starting their child. And they really don't know what coach is thinking. But with this app, parents are able to really get good insight into what's going on on the team. What are the dynamics? Why is my child not getting more playing time? Why can't I get some good feedback from coach? And so that way parents can actually just enjoy the game, enjoy their cup of coffee, and just 
chill out on Sunday mornings at the game. Uh, and it's just as important for the young boy or girl uh, uh, who might be uh, here. You know, one of my famous sports psychiatrist colleagues over the years shared the sports doctor with me for years, Dr. Jim Vickery, when he would give advice to sports parents, he'd give them a few bullets. And number one was don't be a critic. And he would talk about all of these important characteristics. And again, many times the challenge was it wasn't a vehicle where parents felt comfortable to talk about those topics, uh, uh, let alone their kid getting in the middle of it uh, and have, again, causing friction. Of course, the whole world of sports injuries also gets in the way many times uh, with all these things. So I would imagine that uh, uh, coaches as well as parents, uh, you know the challenge. Not only were you a sports dad, you also coached your own kids, didn't you, Ian? That's true. That's true. So there's a lot of psychology um, um, to, to that whole dynamic. There's a lot of psychology, but there's physiology too. Like parents, it's, it's their cortisol levels on the sidelines that are all amped up. Yes. And when they start to understand that, you know, the biology, the physiology, they can start to get control of their um, behavior on the sidelines. Uh, they could also be very, very helpful in helping to evaluate right. and, and deal with right. uh, the fact that some of these physical challenges, again, where these kids feel pressure to play, uh, uh, to play hurt, this whole mm-hmm. overkill times 100, which is why I co-authored the book, Hashtag A Sports Parents, this whole epidemic of youth sports overuse injuries, everybody. Are you hearing me? Both physically and mentally. So one of the things I felt, Ian, that you and I spoke about even years ago, you were first on the show, was the importance of taking a step or two back, a few deep breaths, and pay attention to the three words on the sports doctor uh, motto, which is number one, awareness. These are the challenges. This is uh, uh, the situation. Number two, the education. Let's uh, really come up with, again, whether it's sports medicine education, whether it is mental health education, um, uh, the, uh, uh, and then positive action and, and making, uh, making a difference uh, in, in, uh, uh, in that regard. So, again, the idea with the whole communication uh, is, is such a big deal because like parents and or the kids, you involve the kids themselves also, don't you? That's correct. It's funny. A lot of almost all platforms and you know apps in youth sports were built for coaches and parents to communicate, and we felt like how could we leave the kids out of that conversation? Um, Great you know, question. <laughs> I, I believe a ten-year-old should be able to get feedback from their coach, learn how to take that feedback in and improve themselves, and. Uh, of course, we have to um, comply with child privacy laws when we have 10-year-olds on our platform, but this was a very important part of what we were building. So, yes, kids are very much at the center of the conversation and, in fact, leading a lot of the conversations on our platform. And, again, I feel that the um, ability of, of parents to uh, listen, we would tell parents all the time, you've got to be good listeners. I mean, if your son or daughter is hurting, you've got to be paying attention. You can't tell me that we need two Advil twice a day because your son's ankles hurt him on the volleyball team. I tell parents that all the time. You're, you're really, really pushing the envelope. So, again, that, that educational uh, uh, point uh, of um, uh, dealing with whether it's the physical and or the mental side. You know, we saw tremendous attention, Ian, to, to mental health, whether it was Simone Biles, uh, the gymnast, talking about it at the uh, Summer Olympics or whether it was um, uh, the uh, great uh, swimming champion, uh, what's his name, with all his gold medals? Phelps. Yes, Michael Michael Phelps. Phelps. Making such a big deal about the mental side of things, uh, and it's great to see that we're paying more attention to that. And I always thought that I Sport 360 was one of the great tools to make it more comfortable, again, for this interaction. We definitely are trying to little, let a little bit of pressure out of the pressure cooker that's going on in sports, <laughs> um, for sure. But we also, in our newsletter, we write a lot of articles about the fact that kids are experiencing pressure in sports at age 8 and 10 and 12 that used to just be reserved for college athletes. 
Like these kids, you know, their parents are taking them to go try out at multiple different clubs and different academies. And, you know, their heads are spinning and they're playing the same sport 12 months a year and they're getting yeah. the overuse injuries. Well, this earlier. is the education side. This is, and now again, I have a chapter yeah. in my book. I call it the prodigy sports. We want kids to play multiple sports and use different parts of the body. Absolutely, everybody in sports medicine feels that way. And that's great, unless you're the parent of a young figure skater or gymnast. Even tennis and soccer now, where you see this kind of specialization. And this is, again, a big part of where the education comes in to be able to deal with these kids and understand uh, you know, you got traveling teams and club teams at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. This is not for everybody. Uh, That's right. And uh, uh, these kinds of challenges, uh, you know, again, you, you mentioned something very, very important, which is we see much more serious intent. We all have to think back not very long, whether it's the world of gymnastics, whether it was skating, even whether it was volleyball, abuse, this abuse of coaches, of parents, of uh, doctors. And uh, uh, it, it's a situation where we have to continue to pay more and more attention. Um, I, Amy is the gal who runs your newsletter, isn't it? Um, That's correct. Right. So, yes, yeah, we had her on as a guest. Tremendous information. You know, the ability I, I, I've participated in, in, in quite a bit of it, which is, again, to pay uh, good attention to do the two things everybody cares about, right? Can I maybe make three? Number one, can the kids have a good time? Let's add that in. Can we prevent injuries and problems? And we're indicated, can we in, enhance performance? Uh, and again, the pressure's early. If you're, the better, you're, more talented your son or daughter is, Ian, sometimes the more the pressure builds, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. I like that list of three, actually. Uh, if I can, maybe we could add one, one more thing to that, and I would try to build their love of the game. Whatever sport it is that they are playing, just help them learn to love that game more. Yes, you know, as well as their, uh, their teammates. You know, sometimes Little League Baseball, Ian, woke up maybe 20, 25 years ago uh, when they realized that, holy cow, 35, 40% of these kids are not re-signing up. Why not? And they started to realize that there was just too much pressure. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a solution, which is the Little League World Series on ESPN for two weeks. <laughs> but I think they've handled it well. And in, in, in so many ways, and this is the world we're in, and this is, again, where the educational, uh, the awareness of, of, uh, of the concern uh, that we have uh, so much progress in so many areas of youth sports, yet if you talk to all of these experts like you, many times we say, man, we're still spinning our wheels, aren't we? Yeah, well, you know what, Dr. Bob, I wake up every day and I say I am not going to be one of the people in this industry that just spins wheels. Like every day we try to make impact. It's a very important word for us. And um, we feel like we're doing that. We're putting. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that. I'm going to yeah. talk about uh, your interaction with our friends at MVP Parent Magazine. I have my sports doctors uh, in column. We're talking to Ian Goldberg, iSport360. We'll be right back at the Sports Doc. If you live in or near Aurora, Illinois, and you're into sports, fitness at any level, or your son and daughter is, you cannot forget about your feet. Your feet affect everywhere else. There are complex motions that come into play, especially in sports. Your ankles, knees, hips, and back all are affected with your foot mechanics. Uh, come visit the office, uh, Dr. Bob, uh, and get evaluated. Uh, check what shoes are best for you. I offer prescription orthotics, which is usually one of the major tools for treatment and prevention of foot-related ankle and leg problems. Also, enhancing performance. Step or two quicker. Call 630-898-3505 or go to sportsdoctorradio.com. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that 
station that makes you feel good. Hey, everybody, live from Chicago. We are back. It's the Sports Doctor. We are talking with Ian Goldberg, the CEO, founder iSport360, and we, uh, right before the break, we wanted to ask you, Ian, about some of the new exciting things with your newsletter. We touched on all the great information, but uh, fill us in. Uh, Absolutely. So, you know, Dr. Bob, we cover a lot of the same topics you do in our newsletter, and it's something I'm really proud of. We have 200,000 subscribers to the newsletter. However, Um, We have been negotiating a few distribution partnerships, and it looks like in the next couple of months, our newsletter will be reaching about 11 million people. And that that just means more sports parents, more coaches will be getting our articles and videos talking about preventing overuse injuries, how to build better uh, relationships between coaches and parents on the team, better nutrition, better hydration, some of your articles that we've featured in the past, um, you know, about keeping your feet healthy, choosing the right uh, shoes. So we're really excited, um, and we think there'll be a, an official announcement just coming up in the next oh, few yes. weeks. You know, the, in the book, Hashtag Hey Sports Parents, when I talk about the two essential exercise concepts for your son or daughter, I don't care what their age is or what their sport is, what their level is. Number one, strengthen your feet and ankles. Number two, work balance and stability. These are the things we really want to include uh, with the, these uh, young athletes routinely, proactively in order to uh, uh, stay out of trouble and being able to include, again, you know, the um, uh, uh, umbrella of information. You know, again, in the book, we have eight different experts in, in all of these areas you're mentioning, whether it's nutrition, physical training, Mental training, parenting, coaching, all of these things, people putting their two cents in. And I think that, again, your newsletter and you paid attention to these kinds of topics. Could I, I was always asking you about them on the radio. <laughs> and the funny thing is, Dr. Bob, because I've been coaching so many uh, uh, girls in my neighborhood because I have two daughters, so many of them have been brainwashed by me to brush their teeth at night on one foot so they can strengthen their feet and ankles. I've been telling them for years. So I I tell you, now what you want to do now in the next newsletter is have them balance on a mini trampoline while they're doing it or, or, or both or the, or, or the sand dune stepper. But that's a terrific addition, which is again, bringing to their attention how important it is. Uh, You know, with girls and whatever, we still see today there's four, five to one ACL injuries, girls to boys. Once yep. girls go through puberty and the widening of the hips, different angle down to the knee, this is why orthotics is so key routinely that I've been screaming about. The uh, problem is if the feet don't hurt, it's missed. When we're talking about some of the things we do with all the different protocols, uh, and again, it's, it's uh, are both the kids soccer players? Absolutely. And basketball How players. And How old are they? Football right. players. Great mix. Wow, uh, that's a great mixture. Uh, when you're talking about like basketball and soccer, when you're talking about demand uh, physically, you know, geez, I hope these kids are in orthotics. Ian, what's the best website for all information with iSports? Uh, it's simply iSports360.com. That's I-S-P-O-R-T 360.com. A couple of bullet points again about the key of your whole goal uh, and the um, uh, whole area with iSport 360. Um, give us a review of those main goals. Yeah, so look, there are lots of apps in youth sports that help you keep track of what time the game is and where it's going to be, but I just always felt like there was a real need to give coaches and kids all the tools they need to have a successful season. Most of that revolves around communication sharing training videos, sharing practice assignments, tracking player progress. 
giving kids their own locker team locker room on the app so they can chat and they can share just the way they do on Snapchat and Instagram. So we're really trying to build that strong team communication. Plus you paid attention. You pay attention to the world of trying out and tryouts. You would always include that kind of information. People, every parent knows or kid knows the whole world of tryouts. And uh, I always thought that was great inclusion. Because it's a miserable time of year for everybody <laughs> right. when tryouts are going on. And if we... Unless uh, you're the star of the app, team. That's true. Right. But everybody else has uncertainty in the tryout. So our app really helps to reduce that uncertainty. Again, that's a big deal. When we're looking for uh, the whole role of the family, we talk so much about it on the Sports Doctor, whether your kid is a superstar whether they're just trying to make the team, these whole dynamics with the challenges today in our society, 50% of the families, you're talking about uh, uh, divorced parents and those kinds of challenges with these kids who might be growing up, to the pressure of scholarships and this whole club sport and traveling teams. This is why Ian and I have financial experts on on occasion to talk about what some of these families are having to choose and deal with uh, as if they're... uh, getting involved with these expensive sports. It's true. And then they're spending even more money for some of these services that help your child to get recruited for um, college sports. It's really, it's a big moneymaker. Um, it's not my favorite area of the industry to talk about because no. I feel like it's, it's um, unfair in a lot of cases, but it is what it is, right? Yes, this is why I'm looking forward to the documentary coming out that I've been involved with for, gosh, over three years with Joel Franco, the film director, with Chesapeake yeah. Films, the uh, yeah. Where Our Children Play, the Challenge of Youth Sports, all of these, again, challenges. Uh, another sports guy, sports dad, uh, with all of those different feedbacks uh, coming many times. There were so many negativities. He, you know, he was like uh, punchy from some of them, but we pay as much attention to this. A lot of great positive stuff. Again, uh, you're part of it, like our colleague Rich Dubin with MVP Parent Magazine uh, that you've been involved with also, again, sharing the information uh, in, in his particular world. It's a, uh, it's a constant challenge, right, Ian? It is, but I like focusing on the positive side like you do. I love focusing on the stories where, Kids just have a great sports season because that's really yes. goal number one. Whatever it more, takes to help them more, have a great sports yes. season, that's what's Well, that's more great important. information. Quickly, give, give me the website again, Ian, before we roll. Sure. Uh, it's isport360.com, I-S-P-O-R-T, 360.com. Uh, you could try out the app, you can demo, uh, or you can check out our blog with all of our newsletter um, articles in there. Yeah, we're also going to be looking forward to the to the new excitement with your newsletter, Ian. So thanks so much. Hold on. We'll be right back, everybody. Sports Talk. Thanks for having me. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It is the Sports Doctors In segment where we preview some upcoming guests. We add some Bob Guida wisdom. We answer a couple emails. Feature some of the ideas, again, important aspects of, of the book, Hashtag A Sports Parents. Great show next week. Um, uh, optometry um, expert, concussion, um, uh, very, very involved individual. Dr. Sam Bean will be joining me. And then Shailene Miller, Shailene, a personal trainer who's working in collaboration with the documentary I talk about all the time, where our children play the challenging sports with Joel Franco. And she's developed 
uh, individual programs with so many different people at different levels of youth sports. So we're looking forward to that. The following week, Dr. Brian Cole, he is the team orthopedist for the Chicago Bulls and the Chicago White Sox and uh, also a uh, collaborator with the Baseball Blue Book. With him is Joel Franco. Again, we're going to talk more about the upcoming documentary next few months. We could see it. We're excited about it. Um, Bob Guida Wisdom, you know, uh, PHA, Peripheral Heart Action, was a concept, the idea that you could aerobically train your body aerobically with um, circuit training or non-aerobic activities. In other words, not running or riding a bike where you were aerobically uh, working the body. Uh, and not lifting weights and resting for a minute or two in between exercises. Again, imagine circuit training. You're doing a shoulder exercise. You go over, you do a leg exercise. You go over and balance on the board. You go over and do an arm exercise. And you do this whatever 20, 25 minutes and finding out that you're getting a tremendous heart positive aerobic effect. And uh, uh, I don't know if Guy invented it, but he sure made a big deal out of it. In his world of uh, bodybuilding and training, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, became a uh, a big, big uh, fan. Some emails. Uh, Sarah says, my 13-year-old daughter plays serious tennis. She plays four or five days a week. Um, she's been plagued on and off with arch discomfort. We've tried various inserts, although he's never been in a prescription device. And that's the key, Sarah. There's a big difference between what you might get over the counter, even in a good uh, sports store. Uh, the idea, uh, it is not uh, individual. It's not prescription. So you want to check with podiatry, ideally sports podiatry, because uh, we would expect proper orthotics to be a major positive effect in all areas starting with calming this arch or plantar fasciitis discomfort down. Uh, sometimes you got to mix in some intelligent rest. She might be just overdoing it and pushing, which is why maybe it's become persistent. Um, and the good news is great outcome. You might want to be uh, continuing uh, paying attention to strengthening, working with physical therapy. Prescription orthotics is ideal alignment Take the strain off those areas. Gary says, my son uh, runs track. Um, do orthotics work in, in, in racing shoes? And done properly, Gary, yes, they do. Been putting orthotics in racing shoes for a long, long time. Like something in a figure skate, you got to be specific about the size, bulk, weight of the orthotic. Uh, one of my colleagues in the radio world, Noah Perlis, he's been a guest. He's a, uh, gosh, a world-class sprinter at 75 years old. And he's my major uh, poster boy with orthotics in his racing shoes with great positive results. So like in a figure skate, which you the orthotic, a dress shoe might have to be a lot narrower, uh, and no big bulky padding. The answer is yes. We would expect it to be um, fitable and helpful. And uh, fitable is very, very important. Again, in the world of soccer, where these shoes sometimes are super, super, super tight, it's always a real challenge to try to add any kind of insert, but it can be done, uh, and especially if it's done uh, uh, properly. A little bit of information about hashtag, hey, sports parents, uh, where, again, you know, we were talking about some of the different challenges and the different programs uh, uh, to help parents make choices uh, about their young son or daughter's uh, sports uh, involvement from recreational to serious to uh, traveling teams, et cetera, et cetera. And Sharky Zartman, my co-author, and we just had her husband, Pat Zartman, and, uh, who coached her mentored her over the years in her Hall of Fame volleyball career uh, with his new book. He was on with us a couple of weeks ago. And she pays big attention to that whole world, Sports Parenting 101. 
And uh, uh, earlier in the show, we talked about the third section of Hashtag Sports Parents. By the way, it's available on Amazon. We have a lot of teams or groups might be looking for a group type. Uh, Ingram uh, Press uh, is, is an area to take a look at, uh, look at that. But we try to pay attention to all the important areas of expertise involved in, in youth sports. Physical and mental, physiological. So we have experts, uh, Katie Davis, talking about uh, sports nutrition, RDK uh, nutrition. We have Dr. Denise McDermott discussing uh, adult and child psychiatry and some of the social media and other kinds of challenges parents and coaches and kids um, uh, might be dealing with. We've got Robert Andrews from the Institute of Sports Performance, uh, a mental training skills uh, expert uh, uh, participating. Uh, so we, we have all sorts of um, Melissa Frey, a uh, physical training expert, going back to when I put orthotics in her shoes as, <laughs> and as a runner when she was 16 years old, talks about, again, all these aspects of optimum physical uh, training and other different experts in different areas, but where again, uh, the real topic in, in so many ways of the upcoming documentary, uh, where our children play the challenge of youth sports, uh, is the fact that it's a $20 billion a year business. Speaking of documentaries, we're so excited in May.